Good evening. Let me adjust a little bit the camera. Welcome to a new video. Um, I'm going to continue a topic that I started two videos ago, I think, one month ago, about um, Knita and um, basically writing code that returns Knita code. So um, I, I will link this video in the description. In, in that previous video, what I did was I showed you how you could use the Knita, Knita expand command to um, literally generate pieces of your R Markdown document. So you, you didn't need to copy and paste a section and change a variable or whatever, or change a data set. You could just write this code and that would generate new sections. You could loop over it and it would generate new sections. So tonight I'm going to continue uh, this topic and I'm going to uh, show you two other techniques that I think are quite interesting. The first one is how to parameterize your markdown files, um, which will allow you to write one single R markdown file and then potentially generate 50 PDFs or 50 Word documents or 100 or just however many you need. And the other thing I will show you is a continuation of this Knita expand uh, topic. Uh, I will show you another function called Knita child. Uh, the idea is the same. You write a piece of, R mark, of generalized, in a sense, mark, markdown code, and then you can loop over that to create new sections. So the output of uh, this code, which I show here in this uh, Word document, um, but you can hide that, of course, um, is this document for Austria, for Portugal, for France, etc. So it's a, a country report, but it's always the same report. So uh, the only variable here is the country. So this will change. Um, this will be the, param the parameter of your R markdown file. This will change you. So we will loop over countries and um, we will generate these sections, okay, which have a very simple title, just telling uh, the reader what variable we're focusing on. Then we're going to plot this variable, as you see, and we're going to run a bogus model, uh, linear regression, just to show you um, how, how it works, okay? Um, and this is, uh, as you see, uh, will be this Knita child bit that will uh, take care of that. So there's two loops. There's an outer loop uh, over the countries to generate the report. And then within each report, you have another loop to generate these sections because this is one variable, but then we have a second, we have a third one. I stopped at three, uh, but of course it could be 50. If you have 50 variables that you want to plot, then uh, you don't want to copy and paste this section 50 times like some kind of savage. You want to write a little code and you loop over that, all right? So there's actually two scripts, which I will link uh, in the description. There's one script to compile the whole thing, and then there's the R markdown file itself. So the, um, let's start with the um, script to compile, because I think this will immediately be clear to you um, how, how, how these par parame parametrized R markdown files work. So we start with a list of countries. This is the countries over which we're going to loop. I could add more countries, but by the way, the data set, I will show you the markdown file. It's the pen world tables 10. It was released quite recently. Um, so we loop, so I, I actually wrote a loop. It's uh, not very often that I do. And we're looping over random. Okay, so this is basic stuff. We're going to random my example report. As an, as an output file, I'm just going to put in I here. So basically the name Okay, so this will be report Austria, report Belgium, report France, etc. So that's also uh, quite standard, and uh, we're going to put a date there, just you know, to 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 do some versioning in a sense. I'm going to do a Word document just because that's you know a lot of people like Word documents, so it could be a PDF or HTML doesn't really matter. And then comes the interesting part, which is this um, params option, which consists in a list. And there you can specify as many parameters as you want. Actually, here I have two. So I have the countries over which I'm looping. Okay, so that's why it's equal to Y. So it will be equal to Austria, Belgium, etc. And I have a year. So this is the year uh, at which I start my plots. Okay, so you will see there's a filter statement where this will be uh, used. I could start later. I could start um, <clears throat> more, more in the past. Doesn't really matter. Um, and I could 
potentially here use other parameters if I wanted to. The idea is that uh, we are going to use these parameters to filter the data set such that when I do the report for Austria, I only have the data for Austria after 1990, and same for Belgium and for France, etc. So now let's go to the markdown file itself. And as I said, there's two parts. There's this outer loop, and within the markdown, there's an inner loop. Let's not focus on the in, inner loop for now because it's going to be a bit complicated. And let's just look at the outer loop. So to make this outer loop work, we do um, the same stuff as usual. Actually, I didn't even need that because I'm not doing a latash file, but I'm, this I don't need either. What is important is that I parameterize my title. And as you see now, I go and grab the country element of the params list. So let's go back to my script. This is a list. I grab the country parameter, and then I will do the same for the year, right? So already my title is variable, okay? My title will change depending on the country over which I'm looping. And then I define, I, I actually tell the document what are my parameters. So there's the country parameter, and there's the year parameter. So then you see that there's two, two uh, strings. There's country, and then there's the country string, and there's year, and there's the year string. I, I, honestly, I honestly think that these are just some um, placeholders or maybe some default values. Uh, I don't think this is very important. You could probably put anything there, but whatever. I just put country and year. doesn't really matter. Then I have my report. So as I said, the data comes from the Penwell tables um, data set. You could use whatever you want. You could use your data, of course. Actually, I have the statement here twice. Let me remove one. Um, let's ignore this for now. I will. This is for the second part. Let's ignore that. I load the data, and in this data, I have every country. I have every year. I don't want that. I want one report per country. So this is where I will filter. Very easy. I grab my params list. And I say, OK, country is in country, or could, it could be equal, equal uh, in this case. And the year is um, greater or equal than the year that I give it. And that's it. That's it. Uh, then I could have whatever code I need. Um, this will generate one report per country. And my code, my R markdown file, could be a basic mark markdown file um, without this second part with this inner loop. This already is, I think, quite simple and very powerful because you, you literally just need to define your parameters over here and then in the um, switch. And then here, you just need to list your parameters and you can loop over them. Um, and if you have others, if you have, I don't know, cities or whatever, you could do uh, you could do a loop within a loop, etc., uh, nested loops, and you could uh, generate uh, your reports per city, per country, or whatever you need. I, uh, it's very flexible. Now comes the second part, because as I said, we want each report to have one section, one plot, and one model. And it's always the same stuff, OK? Uh, the, the variable here is one of the variables of the data set. In this case, it's this uh, CGDPE. Then it's uh, average working hours. And then it's uh, this thing. I don't remember what it is. doesn't matter. Um, and as you see, it's always the same thing. So why, why is programming useful? Because it allows us to avoid to have to repeat ourselves. We, we don't need to repeat ourselves. We write functions that we can keep calling with different parameters. And this is a bit of the same. The difference here is that the function that we're going to write here is going to return our markdown code. So um, it's going to return a string, basically. So we have to work a little bit with strings. So there's, I think, two uh, difficulties with that that we have to be aware of. And I'm going to discuss this now. So my plot over here, for, for the plot, I wrote a function okay, uh, that wraps a ggplot, uh, standard ggplot code, uh, with a little twist. So I have my data set, I have my variable. However, uh, if you are familiar with uh, programming with dplyr, programming with ggplot, if you give a variable like this, an unquoted variable, you need, usually what you need to do is the following. You need to say, well, my variable, I quote it now, and then I will, uh, actually, this would be here, not, then I will unquote it when I need it, okay? 
that's how it should work. However, this won't work over here for a very simple reason. The reason is that our variables here are strings. They're not bare names. They're not unquoted names. Okay, They're not unquoted variable names. They're strings. But if we give a string to ggplot here, if this y here is a string, ggplot doesn't know how to work with that. Uh, ggplot needs a variable name, an unquoted variable name, a bare name, literally. So we need to convert these strings to uh, variables, to bare names, or to symbols. So if we run this in the terminal, if I say symbol, so this is from the rlang package, or if you load dplyr, you will get it as well. If we do symbol of um, x, we'll get x. So we, we get an unquoted variable name. Um, if you do the enquo bit, well, uh, in, uh, interactively, you have to use quo. Um, if you do quo x, you have this quotient, okay? But if you do quo of a string, then you, your quotient contains a string, so the expression is still a string. So you can't unquote, you can't quote here a variable if it is a string. You you have to convert it back to a symbol, and then using bang bang, uh, ggplot will know what to do with it. So that's the first part that is a bit tricky. The second part that is tricky, uh, and it's a bit more tricky, is the model. Uh, that one was uh, very tricky. Oh, and by the way, um, before okay, why why uh, is this? Why not you know why not using closures? Because in the previous video I used closures, I gave closures to uh, to my function, uh, and it worked. Uh, why it, it can't be closures? Well, because it has to be a string because I am also um, looping over here. So I'm also so uh, the title okay, of the section. This needs to be a string. This needs to be a string. So uh, as you see, variable, and this I call here, uh, I inline some R code. So X will be here, the string will be CGDPE, AVH, etc. Okay, so that's why it needs to be a string. Uh, then, okay, no problem, it's a string. I convert it to a, uh, I convert it over here to a variable name and ggplot will print my plot. But you need to add the print step. If you don't add the print statement, if you just add make plot, what will happen is that instead of having the plot, you will have the underlying list because a ggplot is a list with all the structure, the data, etc., all the options as a as a as a list basically. Um, and um, and so if you if you're working interactively and you just write if you save your ggplot in a variable called x, if you just write x in a terminal. The, the default print method will show you the plot. But over here, it won't be the case. It will show you a list. And I think the problem why or why it will show you a list is because we have this option here, results equal as is. And this is important when you're working with knit child or knit expand and all these variables. This needs to be a string. And to, for this to be a string, you need this thing. And this needs to be interpreted as is. And then it will be compiled uh, when our markdown runs. And that's why. So that's very important. This results as is, uh, which means that this needs to be a string, which needs that you need to have the print statement to have the actual plot and not the underlying list. Okay, so that's already you know quite a lot. And now comes the uh, now comes the the big the big enchilada. Um, I use so I want to run a regression. Okay. My regression, let's not look, let, the, the, forget all this. Forget, just look at my regression over here. Very simple stuff. It's a, I just want to run, I, I just want to regress these two variables on this, okay? So X will be in one section, CGDP, AVH, etc. And I just want to run. So I write my formula as I would. But because this is a string, okay, LM does not understand. If I write, okay, let, let, let's, let's look at the terminal here below. If I write LM of uh, MPG uh, over LM and data empty cars, no problem. If one of those is a string, doesn't work, okay? So... The variables can't be strings. It's the same problem with the ggplot. But for ggplot, we could use uh, all the Erlang engine, all the Erlang facilities to solve the issue. 
this is not the case. So base base functions can, can don't uh, I, I I don't know if this is the right word, but they're not compatible in a sense with all this Erlang engine. Which means that uh, we can't just like here yeah, unquote. As far as I know, it doesn't work. Maybe maybe it works, uh, but I tried some stuff. Didn't seem to work, so I don't think it works. Maybe there's another way to do that. But I thought, okay, since this is a string, let's just write my command as a string, and I add this. So I use this function just to get a nice table. This function m summary doc x. It's just a little wrapper around the model summary function from the model summary package. Very good package, very great, which allows you, as the name implies, to get the summary of a model in a nice table. So I use as the output flex table, but you have a huge uh, list of different types of outputs that you can use, and, um, and it, it's great. So re highly recommend you can even put in more than just one model, and then you'll have a models next to each other in the in the output table really great package so i just do that why <laughs> why because the output option here i had to specify it and you see you I, I have some quotes and this is a bit of a, an issue because over here i already have a lot of quotes so i was getting confused with uh, quotes and uh, you know single quotes double quotes and triple quotes are not supported in r they are in python if i remember correctly so uh, i i had a problem here with all these quotes, so I thought, okay, you know what? Let's just write a function where I give this option as a default, so I don't have to write it here. That's that's just for this. And then I paste everything, and this, okay, this just creates a, a nice. This just creates a nice. Um, let's let's take a look, actually, in the terminal because I can, if I replace x, okay, if I replace x over here by avh. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe I have. A, uh, is this okay now? No, this is okay. Yeah, you see, this builds a command that I that is as a string, but now it's it's a command that if if I didn't have the quotes, and if I would just paste it in my terminal, this would execute the code. So this is exactly what I want to do. But because I'm not working interactively, I'm compiling a document. I need to use this eval parse trick. What is eval parse? So it evaluates by parsing some text. So if I write something like log of 10, this evaluates it. So this takes a string and it evaluates it. Simple as that. Quite simple, quite powerful. Uh, this is usually, as far as I can tell, used in more in developing when you're developing packages or things like that. And, you, you, you ask your user for, for some bits of code, and then you, you build a formula with that or something like that. So this is usually used for that. I had to use it recently for the package I'm working on. Um, so that's why I thought about it. And again, maybe there's a better way to do it. Maybe there's a way uh, without string manipulation. I'm quite sure there is. Uh, probably is there, there is probably a way uh, by using all these uh, deparse and substitute commands, etc. Probably there's a way to do that. But I thought, you know what, since Knita is expecting strings. I'm working with strings. Why not stay in the realm of strings and just you know, build this command as I go and then evaluate it? And as you can see, so this uh, Knita child expects a, um, a string. Uh, so I, yeah, and you literally write what you need. Okay, You literally write line by line what you need. So I, I first I write my uh, section title. Then I put in my... Uh, I, I don't remember how you call that. Uh, my tags. I don't know if it's the right word. Uh, and and within that, I write my R code as I would uh, normally. Uh, of course, uh, if I was working with one single markdown file, I wouldn't write this eval parse bit. But uh, here, because I'm looping over this, I need to do it this way. And then I just finish my my uh, my code. Um, and then I, I could write more stuff. Could write more stuff if I wanted to, um, but I don't want to. Then there's this environment thing. I so I, I will link in the description where I got this. Okay, this is in the um, I don't remember the name of the of the book now. Um, it's in the it's in, in, in one of the books of um, uh, of the author of R Markdown. So I will link it that in the description. Um, but so this environment thing, I think this is needed because when you execute when you compile an, a markdown file um, 
what I think happens, and this is a bit complicated, I'm not sure I understood, but I, what I think happens is that these variables, they, because they don't exist in your environment down here, okay, because they, 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 they don't exist, uh, crap. They, don't, they don't exist down here, okay, uh, our markdown won't find them. So, so R won't find them if you compile it like this. So you have to tell Kmita, okay, don't look for X uh, in, in this environment because it's not here. Look for X that over here in, in, in the environment where, uh, where, where the, the, the Kmita file lives. I, I don't know if it's the right explanation. I've also had some problems last week actually with this. I got some help on the R Studio forums. It was again on my uh, package that I'm working on, where I had a very similar issue. I was trying to compile uh, Markdown files and I was trying to run tests, and variables weren't being found, which was super weird because they were in the script. And then uh, <clears throat> a nice uh, user explained to me, "Well, be careful because those things live in different environments, so you have to specify in which environment you want them to be uh, found." So I think this is why you need this. Uh, then quite true, I guess it's just to avoid to have some messages and things like that. Uh, this is really copy pasted from the uh, link that I will that I will uh, share below. And then that's it. Oh, almost that's it. Then you have cat. So cat will actually so because uh, you we, we loop over that as you see using Laplace. So we loop over the variables, and this is a function. Okay. So the function will be executed for then and for this and then for this and then for this by replacing x uh, at each step. Uh, and so we get a list, okay? We get a list of uh, of strings. So we get a list with this that contains the string that now we need to evaluate. And this is where cat comes in. So we need to unlist that and because it's a list of strings. So we need to unlist and just create a huge string, okay? That's it will it will be the whole uh, the whole source code that is that has been generated. And cat uh, cannot work with lists. So that's just to, to make it work. And then we separate. Uh, using a uh, again, I don't remember this, but a new line, a new line. We separate using a new line, so just to to have the uh, the strings one below the other. That's it. And once you execute that, you get this report. You get so this is the report for for Austria. Let me maybe <coughs> open a uh, another one. Uh, let's open the one for Belgium. So we get another one for Belgium. It's exactly the same thing. Okay, but the data is different. Okay, uh, maybe let's try to. So this, so if you we look at the model, you see we have different. So the model is totally bogus; doesn't make any sense. Just to show you how you could, to, just to show you this trick, basically. Uh, so this is the one for Belgium. This is the one for Austria. I could show you the others, but it would be the same thing. So what have we learned today? We have learned to generate. In this case, I, I just did six reports, but uh, we we could do fifty countries, and. 100 variables. Uh, we could add more variables here and just execute that and it would create your, PD, your, your PDF or your Word document. So this is super powerful because uh, this is a bit complex, sure, but it has a huge advantage that you don't need to copy and paste. Um, and then if you copy and paste, you will make a copy and paste mistake at some point. You will forget to copy and paste one variable in one report and that's, that's for sure. This is a bit complicated, but once it works, and if you need to generate, especially if you need to generate really a lot, if you really need to, if you have to generate something for the departments of your company and you work for maybe for a big company or whatever, you have 20 departments and you have 30 variables or, or whatnot, you could use that to generate the sections. And, uh, in, and, and you see it's less than 100, it's less, less than 99 of code. And I have a lot of useless stuff here. I could remove all this. So it would be a very small script this is nice because it's usually easier to, to, to debug, it's e easier to understand. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's just much, much simpler, goes faster. Of course, these tricks are not necessarily very easy, but uh, I think that this little, these four lines here that I'm showing you, they cover basically everything. You have inline code, you have a ggplot with this print method, with also now you know that this has to be a symbol. Plus here, uh, how you could handle uh, base R functions using this eval parse trick. So basically, I think you have every ingredient here to do uh, to do your report now. Uh, 
with whatever variables, whatever uh, plots, models, or, or whatever you need. And if you need simple tables, you could go back to the previous uh, video that I showed you, where I, I use um, another function that just prints a table. So you could use that trick as well. So yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a, a long video, but I think it's uh, definitely uh, worth it. So let me know in the comments if this is helpful. And if you have questions, as always, not hesitate. Have a good evening or a good day or a good afternoon and uh, see you next time.